So when it comes to someone as loved as Paul McCartney, everyone's got different opinions, of course. But I think we need to appreciate how difficult this was to do. Oh, it's so hot here today, guys. Gotta be drinking water. But hello and welcome back to another video. I'm just gonna bring the chair down a little bit. Um, so yeah, I don't even know what I'm gonna call this video yet, but you guys are probably looking at this title thinking, what on earth has he done now? Um, this is a video I've been planning for some time and kind of mentally preparing in my head. Um, it's taken a long time to put this list together, but I think I've finally got it ready. I am ranking Paul, McCart Paul McCartney's career so that is, I am ranking everything he's basically put out in, it's, you know, I, I just thought it'd be an interesting idea, um, to, just to see how this list turns out. Um, and I am ranking his studio albums, his live albums, um, his weird Feynman-ish albums, his, um, the, the pieces that he's composed, and compilations. Um, and I know it's weird, to, and you shouldn't really compare like a compilation to a studio album, but I'm looking at it all in different uh, aspects. Compilations in terms of, is the track listing good? You know, what has he come up with what I feel were the best songs for the time? Live album, is he doing a good new variety of songs? Is he singing well? So yeah, it's just a ranking of everything he's officially put out. I'm not doing singles, of course, because if I was doing singles, we'd be here all day. <laughs> um, um, and yeah, it's, I'm not putting, of course, any Beatles stuff in here. Uh, none of his film stuff or um, TV documentaries. This is just all albums that he's put out. Um, if you go on Wikipedia, you'll see all of the uh, albums that he's worked on. Um, I might be missing one or two items, I'm not going to lie. I reckon at the end of this video, there'll probably be a couple comments saying you missed this, you missed that. But I'm trying to include everything which I believe he's released. Um, so anyway, he's got close to 100 items. <laughs> so I'm going to try and go a bit quick. Um, but yeah, of course, at the end of the day as well, I just want to say this is my opinion. Um, and you know, I'm not right by any means. <laughs> I'm probably the furthest thing from being right. Um, so if you guys would be interested, I'm not making this a thread or anything, but if you guys uh, did want to take part and jump on this challenge as well, I'd be very excited to see what videos you guys could come up with as well. Uh, what lists you guys could come up with. Um, it's not an easy task, that's for sure. It took me a good couple days to come up with this. Um, so if you are going to do it, I'd say have a really good think about it. Um, but anyway, let's dive in. So my least favourite thing that McCartney has put out is tripping the live fantastic highlights because it's just very pointless really I think when you've got the um, the, the triple LP set out there with all of the, all those songs on. I know why he put it out, I understand why he put it out, some people probably just wanted one, a, a smaller listen but um, the next thing up, um, the Liverpool Sound College. That McCartney um, worked on. He, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's under his catalog. I'm not sure if he produced it. I think he produced it. Uh, but yeah, this is just weird. I mean, the Feynman stuff's a little bit out there, but it's still listenable. This one's just really weird. This is kind of his Two Virgins, Life with Lions, electronic sound thing, um, and it's it came out very late in his career in the year 2000. So. Um, but yeah, it's a very strange listen and one which I don't really get any enjoyment out of. Then we've got a studio album. Um, we've got Chopper B C C C P. I'm just not a fan of this album. I just don't like it. There's not a single song on here I actually enjoy, if I'm being honest. Um, I Again, I know uh, looking at this album, he had to make it quick. It was made specifically for the Russian market. Um, and yeah, I'm sure that when it came out, it was alright. But... Um, now that there's so much out there on McCartney and it's also available, it's it's just obviously one of the weakest things he's done, I think. Um, but anyway, understandable at the same time, so you can't be too critical of it, I don't think. <clears throat> the next one up 
is Strawberry Ocean Ships Forest by the Fireman. So this was the first Fireman project, which came out in 93. Um, and yeah, it's it's an interesting listen. As I say, I do enjoy it. Um, but this one's very generic, I think. Very plain. Um, very, uh, not much characteristics going on in this one. It's a bit meh. But, um, it's, a, you know, it's, it's an alright album. It's an alright album. And then I have included this as well. <laughs> this might be stretching the barrel a bit here. But I have included the McCartney interview. Because it is an official release at the end of the day. Um, and it's quite an interesting listen, I think. There's a lot of cool topics um, on this that he goes into. Uh, he opens up a course talking about McCartney 2 because that was the latest project. But he goes back and talks about things like wildlife and um, of course he talks about the Beatles. Um, he talks about things like the Beach Boys pet sounds and some really interesting things on here. So it's not actually a bad list. I mean it's not one that I go back to at all. I'm not going to lie but the first time you listen to it I don't think it's, it's alright. It's fine. And then the very first thing he done in his solo career Family Way, um, yeah, it's 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 an okay um, score for a film, but in terms of what McCartney was doing conducting wise and whatnot, um, he definitely went on to do a lot better things in the later part of his career when it comes to that stuff, as we'll get to. And then I've got another live album here. This is uh, Paul McCartney live in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, this this one's okay. I don't mind it. It's um, it's just a bit forgettable, I think, because there's not many tracks on it. Um, there's only a couple unique songs. Um, that was me. That's like the only one. Because th th he does a couple of, um, um, like, Only Mama Knows. That one's unique to this as well, I guess. But like a lot of the other songs that are performed live on there, he'd already done on other live albums. Um... Then we've got a studio album. This is Give My Regards to Broad Street. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this album, and I don't think many people are. But the thing is with this album is it's got No More Lonely Nights on. It's got Not Such a Bad Boy. Um, and I also like the, the uh, play-out version of No More Lonely Nights. So it's got three awesome songs on, but then the rest of this album is just very just pointless. <laughs> <laughs> Again, understandably, it was there for the film. They put a lot of Beatles songs in it to help sell the film. But And then we've got Wildlife. Um, yeah, I like the B-side to Wildlife. Um, but the A-side is just not very good, I don't think. Um, but it's an interesting listen, and I do go back to that album. And then we've got Run Devil Run, which is an album which I personally have never really been able to connect with much. I know some people really like it. For me, I just, I don't know, there's something about this album which doesn't click with me. Although I like a few songs on here, like No Other Baby, Try Not To Cry, Movie Mag, Brown Eyed Handsome Man. Yeah, they're, they're good. They're good songs. Um, yeah, the rest of the album is just a bit meh, I think. But it's, it's alright, it's a decent listen. And then we've got Press To Play, which is a very, very cheesy 80s album, very cheesy. Uh, but there are a couple songs on here which I really love, I can't lie, like Stranglehold and Press. Them two songs is just so good, I think. Um, and then the rest of the album is very, mm, very, very, it, it, it's hard to describe that album. Some people just really lay into it, and I completely understand why. Um, I personally wouldn't lay into it, but it's it's just, it's an album which is just very middle of the road, I think. Um, and then here we've got Rushes by The Fireman, which is the second album from them, um, which is a much better album um the pieces are original on here which is nice um uh, my favorite track on here is apple tree cinnabar amber that's a really really cool instrumental um and yeah it's a, it's actually a good listen i actually enjoy listening to it um it's i do like my instrumentals and i think that's a very very cool album it's a very mellow very nice sounding very well produced album as well i'll say and then we've got paul mccartney's unplugged the official bootleg I'm not a fan of this really, um, I, I mean, I don't mind listening to it, there's a couple good songs on here, um, but as far as Unplugged albums go, this is actually one of the worst ones I think, there's so many better people, uh, artists who have got an unpl on Unplugged and then released their session on there as an album, there's so many better albums out there um, of people on Unplugged I think, but um, there's some good stuff on here at the same time, it's, it's, it's still a fun listen, um, I just think 
McCartney went the wrong way. I like it when people go on Unplugged and take kind of rocker songs like, um, you know, Eric Clapton done Layla and then he done a nice slow acoustic version. Imagine if McCartney done like a slow acoustic version of Helter Skelter. I reckon that would have been awesome. Uh, but anyway, next up is Pipes Peace. Very similar to um, Breast of Play. Very cheesy. Um, but I like the way the album starts and ends. I love Pipes Peace. I like Say Say Say. And I really like the track Through Our Love, which closes the album. Everything else is a bit hit and miss on this album, though. I'm not going to lie. It's a very, very strange album. Then we got Kiss on the Bottom, which... I really love for what it is. Uh, Diana Cool done a great job on this. It's just a really interesting listen, I think. It's not amazing by any means, but I think McCartney done a really good job. I think he nailed the American songbook stuff. And then here we got Thrillington, which is cool. I'm a big fan of Ram, as we'll see. Um, it's nice to get chucked back into the Ram sound. Um, McCartney only produced this one, so he wasn't heavily involved. But, um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a nice little side project that originally was going in the early days of the Wings, but didn't get released till the later part of the Wings' career. But it's nice that they that he put it out eventually, and it's a cool listen. Um, and then here we have Trippin' the Life Fantastic. Um, it's, a, it's just chock full of songs. There's so many songs on it. Um, but I don't know why. I just don't think McCartney sounded great on this one. I think it might have been because he, was, he hadn't toured for a while. I'm sure someone will let me know. Um, it was his first time back doing a big tour, um, so it's not one of my personal favourite live albums from him. But there's a lot of stuff on it, and it's it's a it's a really cool listen. Um, and then we've got Wings Greatest compilations. This is the first compilation. Um, so yeah, the reason I've put it here is because you know there's some great songs on here. Let's face it. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not looking at compilations like that. Um, I'm trying to look at it of how well he's picked here. Um, and I feel like these songs were all picked really well um, from the early, from, you know, everything, Wings, uh, at the Speed of Sounds and everything before. Oh, no, no, it does go up to London Town, sorry. It's everything before Back to the Egg. So I think they did pick, they picked all the hits, obviously. Of course they did. Um, but there's a couple songs on here. Uh, me and Mr. Merrill just reviewed this album and he pointed out that like Another Day isn't even a Wings song, so that's a very good point to add towards a little critique of this album. Plus, even though I know a couple of these songs were big hits, uh, like Hi 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 and Let Em In, I'm just not really a fan of them songs. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then next up is Wings at the Speed of Sound. And again, this is an album which I'm probably going to get a lot of flack on. Because I know it's a very popular album. Again, if you grew up with it, um, being around when this album came out, I'm sure it's you, you will have completely different feelings towards this, which is understandable. Um, but for me, I've just never really been able to connect with this album. There's only about three songs on it I like. Um, the, 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 the three songs I like are masterpieces, I think. Um, but I have reviewed that album, so if you want to see me go into more detail on it, it's, it's there. And then people are going to kill me for putting this in front of Wings at the Speed of Sound. Here is Driving Rain. <laughs> um, I like Driving Rain. It's an album which has grown on me over time. Um, the production on it's really good. Paul doesn't sound great. And there are about five songs on here which are absolute garbage. There's no doubt. But there are some real good tracks on here as well. I love the opening track, Lonely Road. Um, and I also like a track called R Rinse the Raindrops. And Magic's a good song on there as well. And then here we've got Ocean's Kingdom, which is a beautiful, beautiful album. Um, I've got this on CD as well, because um, I've left my vinyl sealed. Um, <clears throat> but it's, it, I, I love putting this on in the background when I'm doing work around the house and stuff. It's a beautiful piece to listen to. It's so good. Um, my favourite track on here is probably Moonrise. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful song. I absolutely love it. And then I've also put here, because it's just so similar almost, um, Et Call Me Un, which came out in 2007, I think it was? Six, 2006. Very small pieces, but again, just beautiful, beautiful work. I really want them to put this out on vinyl. I would honestly buy it in a heartbeat. It's so good. It's, mm, it's really good McCartney work there. I'm trying to find a spot to put my CDs. I'll put them here. Okay, next one up is Paul Is Live. I like this one. This is better. Paul's vocals are better than Trippin' and Life Fantastic on this one. Um, and I really like that he's doing a lot of the uh, off-the-ground songs. Because, again, as we'll see, I'm a, I like off-the-ground. I think that's a good album. Um, so, yeah, there's some really cool stuff on here. 
And, you know, he does um, some good Beatles stuff. Like, I Want to Be Your Man, he does on here, which is cool to hear him do that. Um, that's really nice. And then here we got Flowers in the Dirt, which is another McCartney album I've never really been able to connect with too much. Because, again, I know some people love it. I don't like the Elvis Costello stuff, other than My Brave Face. That's good. Um, I really like the track, this one, which is on here as well. Okay, I'm going to have a quick drink if it's okay. I do apologise, but... Oh, the hay fever and the weather. Mm. Feel it getting to me. <laughs> okay, so the next one up. Um, yeah, this is weird. You guys can already see what it is. Uh, Twin Freaks. Why is this so high? Or, or, uh, why have I put this so high? Why have I put this above Flowers in the Dirt? Because uh, I definitely would rather put Flowers in the Dirt on. Don't get me wrong. I'd, as I say, I really would put any of McCartney's studio albums on over everything else really because studio albums are where it's at but I have a lot of respect for this album which is why I put it so high because it's different it's unique the production on it's fantastic and I really enjoy listening to it I know some people don't I do I don't know why I just really enjoy it um I absolutely love the version of Live and Let Die on here and What's That You're Doing is also fantastic. And Mumbo, the, the version on this is better than the original, I think. Um, so I don't know why, I just really, really enjoy that album. I know, it's weird. And then here we've got London Town, which I have just reviewed, which is a very interesting album. It's, a, it's got a lot of good stuff on it. It's got some fluff on it, but it's got some really good stuff on as well. And then we've got another compilation. Wingspan, yes, so of course when Linda McCartney unfortunately passed away, Paul went back and um, plucked this album out, you've got the hits on the first vinyl and the history on the second vinyl, and <clears throat> it's it's a great little, you know, selection of songs, well I'm not sure, again there's hit songs on here which aren't by Wings, like Another Day, and um, No More Lonely Nights, is that, that's not Wings is it, I, I don't know, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I know No More, no More Lonely Nights, of course, is uh, from the 84-5 album, Give My Regards, and obviously Wings split up in 79, so I don't know whether they got back together to record that song, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a good compilation, I enjoy it. And then we got Red Rose Speedway, which is an album which I kind of dig, I know some people don't. I like it, it's, it's a very unique album, I don't think you'll ever hear anything quite like it. And another compilation I've put in, All The Best. And, yeah, I'm pretty biased to this, because this is the album that introduced me to McCartney's solo career. I used to play it all the time. So I am very biased to this one. I like it because it covers everything, really, uh, from Wings to all of his classic solo hits, like Maybe I'm Amazed and... Whatever ones could I say? Say, say, say. So, yeah, that's a good one for me. <laughs> Um, and then here we've got Standing Stone, which is beautiful as well. I feel like they were trying to do the Liverpool Oratorio again with that one. But that's re it's a really nice listen. And then I've got Back in the World. Um, it, uh, and yeah, I really enjoy this album. It's really cool. Um, he does a lot of the uh, Driving Rain songs on here. Um, some odd choices, but this it's a really good live album. Then I've got McCartney 2, which is an album which, again, I have a soft spot for. I love the creativity of it. Um, how unique it is, and coming up, I think, is still one of McCartney's best songs. And then I got New, the most recent studio album from The Legend. It's really good. I don't think it's aging great, um, but it's a really good listen, really good. It shows how good form he was in at the time for a man who just turned 70 years old. And then we've got Back to the Egg, which will be my next McCartney album I review, uh, which is really good. There's some really good stuff on here. It starts off really well. Um, I love Baby's Request. It's really, really awesome song. And then, again, pretty biased towards this one, because I know it's definitely not one of Paul's best live albums, but I have a soft spot for it, so this is kind of what I grew up with. I used to watch it with my grandparents all the time. Um, good evening, New York City. I absolutely adore this. And he does some Electric Argument songs, um, which again, as we'll see, is one of my absolute favourites. Um, then we got Working Classical. I really like this classical album because it actually touched on his solo career. Um, 
like he goes back and does junk. Um, Warm and beautiful. My love, maybe I'm amazed. Calico skies, golden earth girl. Some days, she's my baby, and a lovely Linda. And then of course there's some new bits on here as well, um, which are, it's really cool. Really, really good listen. Really, really good listen. And then here we have the debut. Um, great first album, fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's just so relaxed, it's so chilled, it's so beautiful to listen to. Um, I love the simplicity of it. Um, it's just, I don't know, I know that it's a very simple album and it's not groundbreaking by any means. But I don't know why, I just always enjoy listening to it. I think it's just so chilled, it just puts me in a good mood. Um, and then I've got a compilation, the last compilation, Pure McCartney. Yeah, this one's done quite well. I love it. Um, I think these. this is Paul's personal selection of songs, and I think he's done an incredible job picking out songs. Um, for a man who has probably close to 500 songs, he's done a great job at picking out the best ones, I think. Um, he's picked some very unique ones as well, like Hope for the Future, Say 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 2015 Remix. Um, good night tonight. And he's picked some personal favourites of mine, which I'm really pleased he put on here. And I love the fact that it's all in a random order. I love it, because I, I haven't memorised this track listing. So it's kind of like, you never know what song's going to come on next. I really like that. Um, and then we've got Off The Ground, which is an album which I have a big soft spot for. I like this album a lot. Um, Off The Ground, I hope a deliverance. Um, I really like Bike Like An Icon. I know other people don't. Um, and I like Come On People as well. So it's really good stuff on this album. Really good stuff. And then we got uh, <clears throat> Venus and Mars. Nearly forgot the name then. Great rocking album. Great rocking album. Absolutely love it. It's fantastic. And then here we've got the last um, orchestrated album. <laughs> I was losing my words now. Um, Liverpool Oratorio. I really like this. It's such a beautiful listen. It really is. I I put this on quite frequently and I just always enjoy it. It's just such a good album. It's beautiful to listen to. Absolutely incredible. Um, and I'm not big on the whole opera stuff and whatnot, but there's something about this which is just fantastic. I think, you know, Carl Davis definitely had this huge input, which was what made it what it was. But, um, you know, I'm... Paul had a big involvement in this one as well, and it's it's a really, really good listen. And then we got Tug of War, the classic 80s McCartney album. It's great. It's really good. There's only a couple songs on here I don't really like. Other than that, it's, a, it's such a solid album. Really good. And then we've got Memory Almost Full from 2005, an album which I've always just loved. I, I love the production of it. I love McCartney's voice. I love... How loud and rocking it is. It's just really fun, really awesome. Really good album. Okay, so what we're down to now, we got one, two, three, four, five, six albums. So Electric Arguments, number five. I adore this. I absolutely adore this. This is why I really want Paul to do another um Feynman album because I really feel like this is some of his best work right here. Um and it's a uh, you saw how low the other two Feynman albums were in my discussion here. Um, I really feel like the Feynman have just got started with this album. Um, so I really want them to do more because it's so good. has some of McCartney's best work on, like Nothing Too Much, Just Out of Sight, Two Magpies, Sing the Changes, Travelling Light, Highway, Light From Your Lighthouse, Sun Is Shining, Is This Love, and Don't Stop Running. Just some fantastic songs on there. Incredible work. Incredible. I absolutely love it. I think it's such a good album. Um, and then I've got Wings Over America, which is arguably the best live album of all time. Um, it's so good. It is so good. It sounds great. The tracks that they do on here are fantastic. It all flows really well. And what's funny is half the songs on here are better than the studio versions when it comes to the um, Venus and Mars and Wings at the Speed Sound songs. I do prefer the live versions of a lot of the songs off them albums. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And then coming in at number four is probably the most famous thing that Paul has ever done since he broke up with the Beatles. And that is Band on the Run. Iconic masterpiece album. It flows so well. Every song is gold dust on it. It is just perfection in a nutshell. It's a fantastic album. One of the highlights of 
the entire decade that was the 70s. It's an incredible album. Incredible album. Um, and then we've got at number three, Ram. Um, yeah, a very high up favourite for many people. It's so good. It really is. I, again, it's like um, yeah, Red Rose Speedway. As I said for that, it's just unique and you're not going to hear anything like Red Rose Speedway. Same thing goes to this. It's a unique album. You're not going to hear anything like this from anyone else. It's so unique and it's so good. It flows so well. All the songs are just really good. I love it. Okay, so my top two items that McCartney has put out. <laughs> Chaos of Creation. I absolutely adore this album. Every song on here is beautiful. The production on it is fantastic. McCartney plays nearly all the instruments himself. He sounds incredible. I love the fact that I'm the producer of this album. I forget his name. His name should be on here somewhere. Um, anyway. Oh, produced by uh, Nigel Godrich. I've, I watched him do an interview and he said that, you know, he was basically trying to be strict with McCartney. If a song wasn't good enough, he'd actually say, no, McCartney. Take that song off, write another one. And he did. And we got this incredible album. Just fantastic. And then here we have Flaming Pie as my favourite. Again, talk about producers. Jeff Lynn from the Elotra Light Orchestra done an incredible job on this album with Paul. We've also got Ringo on this album. Um, we get to hear a bit of Ringo as well, which is nice at the end of Beautiful Day, which is one of the highlight songs on this album. It's fantastic, this album. I absolutely adore it. Um, Song of the Sing is great, The World Tonight is great, um, Young Boy is fantastic, Calico Skies is beautiful, Flaming Pie is awesome, um, Little Willow is a personal favourite of mine, Beautiful Night and Great Day, also fantastic songs to end this album on, um, it's an incredible album, but wow, we've done it, we've done it, we've got to the end guys, we've done it, whew, well that was weird, um, so I hope you guys can kind of see my thinking about that ranking, because it was hard to compare like, compositions and uh, compilations even and um you know all these orchestrated ones to so studio albums because obviously at the end of the day like i've got like liverpool oratorio really high but i still would rather put on probably press to play because it's more my style but i have a lot of respect for liverpool oratorio i have a lot more respect for that over press to play that's kind of my thinking behind this and same with the compilations my thinking is how good is the compilation and whatnot but yeah, as I say, I might have missed one or two items, um, and if I did, I apologise. Um, but yeah, that, wow, that was that was fun. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. As I say, um, I would be very interested to see other people take part in this, if you want to, of course. You know, it's, it's it was just a bit of fun. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Uh, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, leave a message, and I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye-bye.